Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so um, we're going back to Texas. So, uh, I don't know, several episodes ago, um, you saw my interview with uh, Jason Santani over at Yano Estacado, and he was kind enough to give me six wines to review. So I, the last couple years, I've gotten just kind of automatically, I mean, we got an email, but I've kind of got automatically gotten email, uh, sorry, wines to review from them. And uh, when I was up in Lubbock, I kind of said, "Yeah, I haven't gotten any wines yet," and uh, I didn't know if I was going to get them soon. He goes, "Listen, I'll just send, I'll just send them with you. That way, they don't have to ship them. And you know, during the summertime, it's better. Like that, that way, it's in my air conditioned car, you know, on the way home instead of on like, a hot truck." So. Um, Anyway, so let's get into it. Uh, since I've been doing reds and whites together, I've got my two glasses. So let's, we're gonna do three wines on this episode and three more uh, after that. So let's just get into it. So this is their 2008 Sauvignon Blanc Signature Series. Did I say 2008? 2018 Signature Series Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, Texas Table Wine. So uh, we've got Texas Fruit here. Um, this retails for, boom, 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 $11. So basically an entry level, okay? Entry level wine here. I hope I have enough gas in this during this review. I'll probably have to go upstairs and get more, um, get another cartridge. All right, boom, boom, boom. I'm excited, I am excited. All right, so let's see what, let's see what it's like. Um, let's hopefully it's as good as the other stuff that I had a few months ago. I don't remember ever having this Sauvignon Blanc, so um, I've had some of the other stuff, but I don't think I've ever had the Sauvignon Blanc. So it's not super aromatic, but there's, you know, you can smell it. This wine is actually fairly warm. I mean, it's not room temperature, but um, I mean, I pulled it from the cellar and it's been sitting out for basically the last two, no, well, it was sitting out for during the last, this last episode, which was I think about 40 minutes. So it's had enough time to kind of warm up a little bit from being like at 45 degrees or 50 degrees. But yeah, it's not highly aromatic. I mean, the bottle doesn't feel cold. I don't get a whole lot out of it. It's kind of peachy a little bit. There's, there's an aroma I'm having a hard time identifying actually. But it's like kind of from my childhood. So it's kind of weird. Anyway, let's just taste it. So it, it doesn't start off with just like that face punch of I'm Sauvignon Blanc, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's super subtle with it. It, 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 it kind of creeps up on you. Um, it, it's got the grapefruit, but it didn't come hard hitting with the grapefruit. It's almost like a ruby red grapefruit, okay? Um, which they, you know, we have a lot of those in Texas. Um, so it's got some of that in it. Um, it's got actually a little bit of peach in it. 
Um, almost like a, not quite like the peach, yeah, almost like a peach tea. Um, I've had some hibiscus stuff recently. It kind of reminds me of that too, but maybe it's just I'm looking for stuff. But I mean, it's tasty. Um, it's a touch bitter. The acid is actually pretty high. Um, you know, Jason said that, you know, if he needs to adjust things, he adjusts, he adjusts them. I know that the acid is a very big, is a, um, acid is really difficult to get in Texas a lot of times. So, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is a lot of Texas wineries acidify or acidulate, which is a word I just heard recently. So, but I'm not saying he's doing this, but, um, because the acidity is so high, it's possible. Because you're trying to you're trying to make sure that you're you're capturing the, the character of the fruit of what it should taste like. It's not an overly complex wine. If I was giving this in a blind, I might go, I might go, it might be Sauvignon Blanc, it might be like a Pinot Grigio with really high acid in Texas. So if I know it's a Texas wine. Um, but I feel it's like more fruit than a Pinot Grigio does. I would probably be on this, the Sauvignon Blanc side, you know. Um, but like I said, it's like a little peach, grapefruit. Um, there is a touch of like lemon lime to it, but it's very pleasant. It's $11. It's, you know, if it was a hot day out like it was earlier today, um, this would be a good, you know, sitting outside type of wine. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I'm not floored by it. Like, I'm like, going, oh my God, you like, I'm gonna buy cases of it, but I like it, it's, it's a nice wine. All right, so don't need that white glass. I don't need that glass of the white wine anymore. All right, so um, let's move on. So uh, 2017 Yano Estacado, Texas Merlot. Uh, this typically retails for $14. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much of this, how much of these two are seen in retail and or on-premise or restaurant, but you can for sure buy them from the winery. Um, if they can ship to your state, you can you can buy it. They ship to your state, otherwise you can buy it at the winery. This one, I know you can buy at retail. All right. That should be plenty. Boom, boom. Here we go. You know, as much as I love screw caps, I'm glad that I don't have a ton of screw caps because I don't have because that says I don't have the Corvin ton of the Corvin screw cap stuff. All right. All right. So on the nose, oh, you know the all these episodes I haven't done wine number two, wine number three, because that's my cue to do the little curtains. Even though I don't ever stop recording, the curtains are just there so that you have that visual that the next wine is happening. It also helps me when I'm editing, when I'm looking, when I'm scrubbing through the the wines. If I see the curtains, I know I'm on the next wine. So it's kind of like this coffee, coffee covered like raspberry um, kind of a blackberry in it. And, um, there's this, uh, man, I'm trying to describe it. There's kind of like a, 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 a um, a wood character, like not, not like, oak flavoring or oak flavor, oak barrel stuff, you know, but like a wood character to it. Like, you know, a wooden, like, piece of furniture, I guess. And there's like a, there's like a sweetness on the nose, too. Like, um, like a really, like, red berry sweetness to it. Let's taste it.
there's a slight jamminess to it. Um, it's predominantly black fruit, but I got a little bit of blue fruit in it and a little bit of red fruit. So it's got three colors. Um, it's really juicy. Um, the, the fruit is ripe. Um, it's like you bit into a red, black, blue fruit. Like it was one fruit, you bit into it. Um, city's kind of high. I mean, it feels high. It may not be as high as I think it is, but you know, mouth is really watering. It's tasty. Um, it's not expensive. Um, would I guess it's Merlot? I don't know. I don't know if I would guess it's Merlot. I like it. It's, I like how it drinks. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to like crushing this bottle at some point in time in the next few weeks or days, maybe. But maybe because a lot of the Merlots I've had have been like Merlot blends, so they've had other grapes in there. This maybe, I don't know if it's 100% Merlot. Um, if I remember correctly, Jason does do a lot of blending. So it's maybe 75% Merlot. Now, with that said, I've had plenty of Merlots and plenty of cabs from all over the world. And I kind of go, well, it might be Merlot, it might be cab, it might be Zinfandel sometimes, you know. So it's variety correct. It's got everything Merlot should have. I mean, everything, but it's got enough of what Merlot should have. But it's also got other things in that make, make me think, of, oh, maybe it's a cab. Like the tannins really aren't, I mean, I'm just now feeling the tannins. So I wouldn't really put this in the Cabernet Sauvignon camp or a Tanat camp or anything like that. You know, there's there's a there's a a silkiness to it, um, a lightness to it, um, but it's it's pretty acidic. A little bit higher acid I would expect from 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 this grape, but it's tasty. Um, a touch of cocoa, maybe a little chocolate too. It's easy to drink. It's pleasant. It's like an everyday drinking wine. It's definitely a table wine. All right, let's go to the next one. This is the 2016 uh, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, Llano Estacado Cellar Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon Texas High Plains. So uh, now we're getting a little more specific. Full disclosure, I've actually, I actually, since in between him, uh, Jason giving me this and today, I did accidentally take the smallest of sips of the wine uh, at, at some place, and then I realized that I have to review the wine. So it was about a month ago, I guess. So it's not like super, super fresh in my head, considering I had less than what's in the glass right now. And I was like, oops, I have to review this wine. So I just kind of like, oh, I'm not gonna taste it anymore. I don't remember hating it, let's put it that way. So, uh, now this goes for, uh, and this is this actually might be the first of me ever having something like that, um, of tasting the exact wine by accident. Never done it intentionally ahead of time. So this sells for $20. Alright, so, this one, this one really leads with the red fruit. There's also a, a touch of funk to it. Not really funk, but just like like an earthiness, earthy quality to it. But it's like like really fleeting. But it's, it leaves with some red fruit, like a raspberry. And um, a little bit earthiness to it. Let's just, uh, let's just go and taste it.
So on the palate, I get red and black fruits. Um, I also get this tartness, almost a sourness to it. Um, kind of like, like a tart red fruit. Um, tannin's really starting to come through though. So you're like, man, it's saying, hey man, I'm Cabernet Sauvignon, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna recognize that. Uh, whereas the Merlot, the tannins really weren't there. I mean, they were there, but not like this. So we know that definitely the majority of the grape is Cabernet, you know, this wine is Cabernet Sauvignon. Maybe it's 100%. Maybe it's like 90% and then there's like 8% of, and 2% of something else. I'm not sure. What I can say, for me, a $20 Cabernet Sauvignon, it's tasty, but it's unlike what you expect from maybe from other parts of the country, other parts of the world, which is a good thing because it should, it should evoke something about the place it's coming from. There is, again, that earthiness, a little bit of dustiness, um, a little bit of bramble. These are things I get from Texas wines, especially from Texas Cab. And sometimes I have to be reminded of, you know, Texas has a terroir. It's a pretty good wine. I like it. Um, I like these wines actually better. Um, but it's definitely an enjoyable wine. Like if I wanted a twenty dollar cab from Texas, I know that it's we're to, we're talking we're talking decent quality out of it. Um, it's not my favorite. It's definitely not my favorite. You know of of all the wines that I had at Yano when I was there. And I know a lot of times your attitude and your mood can affect how you taste a wine. If you're in a great mood, everything tastes great, right? If you're not in a great mood, nothing tastes great. I'm in a somewhat like clinical, analytical, not sterile, but like, you know, I'm not in like, oh, I'm like having a great time. And yeah, I mean, I am having a great time, but you know what I mean? Like it's, it's more of a analytical thing where I have no distractions. I don't have, I don't have anybody to influence me either way. Um, I like the wine and I think I will enjoy it if I'm like with friends or over, um, having some food with it. I think I'll enjoy it more um, because like I said, I, I tasted like the, the smallest amount of it a few weeks ago. And I remember it I'm like, oh, this is good. So I think mood wise, this is this, this wine for sure is more of a mood wine. Um, I like the wine. I mean, I'd honestly want to like, to be honest, if I was going to drink an entire bottle after all my reviews, which I'm not because it's 2.30 in the morning now and I still have two more sets of reviews to do. Um, this would actually be the one I would drink. But I also think this is the one I need with food. Like, I think if I was eating some steak, if I was eating like, like hamburgers, pizza, hot dogs, brisket, like, I'd want to drink it just to drink it, be like, man, I want to really get into this wine, but I also think this has got to be a food wine. Like, this is not going to be a wine I'm just going to open up because I just feel like, you know, drinking wine and like getting a buzz. So I think it would go really well with food, and uh, I think that the wine would shine with that. Yeah, all right. So for this episode, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, click the links below to frame me up. Click the links below to learn more about Yano Staccato. Uh, if you didn't already know anything about them, hit the donate button or donate button, wherever it is. Um, send me to Oregon to go check out some cool wineries out there, and we'll see everyone again next time. Thank you.